Welcome to What's New in Revit MEP 2012. Today the focus will be talking about what's new specifically in the HVAC sections of Revit MEP 2012. My name is Tom Cassell. I'm a Revit MEP Technical Specialist with MicroCAD Training and Consulting based out of Watertown, Mass. We will start with a building that's pre-laid out and discuss mainly what's new and how it's been improved in 2012 for all you users that are currently looking forward to moving into this new version. So to start, I'd like to cover what's new with the systems. The systems have been greatly improved in this version making it a lot easier to work with. Now, users that are currently using Revit MEP understand that in order to be able to make these diffusers work properly with any kind of supplying unit, you need to generate a duct system. Now, in the old versions, generating a duct system was very cumbersome. You used to have to click Create Duct System, and then you had to edit system, and it was a long, lengthy process. Let's show you how quick it is now in the new version. In the new version, you can highlight the objects that generate that system and click Create Duct System. And when you do, it comes up and says, okay, this is a supply air system, and you can give it a name. I'll leave it Mechanical Supply Air. We also have the ability now to just check a checkbox. So that way, when I say OK, it'll immediately bring me into the system editor. Again, you used to have to click an object, go find buttons. It's much more user friendly now than it was in the older version. So instantly, I'm in my system and I'm editing my system. So I'm just going to select the equipment that will supply that system, and we're good. So we could hit finish and in the old version that's really all you would do you would either hit finish or you'd come over here to the right you could change the name you could change what works set it's on or add comments simple little things is all you used to be able to do the new version has a lot of greatly improved features that are going to help this out quite a bit such as i can now edit the system type in the old version you couldn't you were stuck with three options supply system return system exhaust system now I can look at a system and say well yes this is a supply system but it's actually a low pressure supply system I can duplicate systems now and create as many systems as I need so low pressure supply I can create an outdoor air system a return uh, system any system that you want so I'm gonna say you know what this is a low pressure supply system we can override the graphics for a low pressure supply system eliminating the need to create a filter for your different systems so I can say low pressure supply uses a cyan color with a certain line type or a certain line weight I have the ability to assign a material I have the ability to turn on and off calculations. Uh, if I'm only doing duct layout and the actual airflow and engineering calculations are not a concern to me, I would want to take this and say do not calculate airflow on low pressure supply systems. That's going to greatly increase the speed of a very large building. The last big improvement to systems is the ability to add an abbreviation again before you could customize a tag to add your own field to tell it it's a low pressure supply system but now every time I create a low pressure supply system it's automatically going to tag this with an LPS for me so I can say okay finish the system and all of a sudden, everything that's part of that system becomes cyan. Again, the color I chose for a low pressure supply system. So systems, as you can see, are much easier to use. For people from other disciplines that happen to be watching this video, you're going to see when I work with piping in the next video that it works the exact same way. The steps are exactly the same, so again, it's much quicker for all your different systems. Electrical, same thing, much quicker, much more customizable. Big improvement for Revit MEP in 2012. Next, let's talk about the duct layout and how we're going to use it. 
So Duct has some improvements, such as the ability to use a duct placeholder, which is really just single line duct. I'm going to avoid showing that for right now. And I'll go right into creating duct. So I'm going to create duct and talk about what's new here. On the ribbon, you'll notice that there's three new buttons. These didn't exist before. I can now inherit elevation, inherit size, and I'll get back to ignore slope. But I can now inherit elevation and inherit size without having to hit the space bar. It was annoying in the old version. If these weren't checked, you'd go and you'd connect. And I don't want to use round. I'm going to use rectangular with taps. You'd go and you'd connect and you'd run off and it would be at the wrong elevation so it would instantly put a drop in. You'd have to hit the space bar to make it match. Well now, inherit elevation and inherit size will automatically do that for you. So I can now start drawing my duct without having to worry about if the size match or if the elevations match. The concern you still have is you still have to make sure though that the shape matches. So if you do have it using round, it'll match the size and the elevation, but not the shape. Other improvements to your duct. When you select your duct, you now get the ability to add lining and add insulation to your duct as a button. Again, before all you could do was go here to the properties palette, scroll down, find insulation and type it in. I can now quickly grab an entire duct run and say yes this whole duct run is going to be insulated and you can even create insulation types with insulation materials and the materials either for rendering for shading I can use a material that will have a specific hatch pattern on it so that way it gives it a hatch when you do use this so I can say it's any type of insulation. I'm going to give one inch insulation to all of this duct. So there we go, we get one inch insulation. Shut off my line weights for a moment. The benefit to the insulation and the lining is it can be edited after the fact. It can be removed. Same thing with your lining. But the biggest improvement to insulation and lining is that it's actually considered a separate object from your duct now. It's no longer a subcategory, it is its own category which gives you more control over adjusting lining and insulation in your different view templates. So I can make changes and turn things on and off really quickly, not just through view visibility, but through view templates as well. Okay, there's two more features left to show that are new in HVAC, and one of them we've already seen, and it involves duct placeholders. Duct placeholders are more like the single line duct feature that's in AutoCAD MEP. The big difference in Revit MEP is it's more like a single line duct tool, where I still get the ability to inherit size and inherit elevation, and I can still predetermine the size, the elevation, and the type of duct that I want this to be in the future. The difference is, is when I'm done and I make my takeoff, uh, what I'm left with is actually just a single line representation of what this duct will be later. I'll also have the ability to do duct and pipe sizing on this later as well. A related feature that I've ignored up until now, but I want to point out is you also get these tooltip warnings that are now letting you know you have open connections at the end of this duct. This is going to be extremely useful as we've talked about with duct flow and this system is currently calculating flow. Flow won't be properly calculated unless the system's closed. And it used to be difficult to figure out where the open portion of the system is. At this point, using these icons I can quickly tell that you know I still haven't finished closing this system well the reason why is because I'm gonna go in I'm gonna draw some flex duct and finish closing this system the icons go away therefore I know I now have an appropriately closed system on each end the second tool that's new that you're gonna notice is much quicker is because we've assigned systems, I now can tag my duct with no leader really quickly 
by system. And so what you're noticing is, well, I have this set to be horizontal. Let's set this next one to be vertical. There we go. Move that into place. I now have a duct tag that can quickly tag duct with 18 inch by 19 inch LPS and it's picking up the low pressure supply from the system that we set way back when. So again in the old versions it was useless. You could only get it to say 18 inch by 19 inch supply. Now it does it again much quicker. This has been a small example of what's new in Revit MEP 2012 focused on HVAC. I'd like to thank you for joining me in this segment and ask you to look for the Revit MEP 2012 piping as well as Revit MEP 2012 electrical where we'll cover what's been improved on in 2012 for your other disciplines as well. Again, thank you and have a good day.